welcome to a new episode of Festival TV with me, Sabinia. I'm currently in the center of Stockholm, where the kickoff of the theme Under the Rainbow has just kicked off. And this is a new theme that the film festival has launched this year to highlight the LGBTQ themed films. Because this year the theme is freedom, where sexual freedom also plays a key role. I've been working in, uh, with pornography for quite a few years. I've made very pornographic films. I've actually made hardcore porn films. Um, quite often I'll make a softcore version and a hardcore version. The softcore version is more uh, widely screened at festivals and that theatrically. Uh, and the hardcore version is marketed as pornography under different titles. I hope we have enough vermouth. Moose, dear moose. And remember just a tad. You know, uh, I, I'm, my, I always make films about people with, uh, or quite often my films deal with people who have extreme fetishes or who don't fit into, who don't fit into, uh, conventional society or who, uh, who transgress taboos. So um, I wanted to choose a subject, even though I wasn't making a sexually explicit film that still uh, challenged uh, some conventions. Mr. Peabody. What's going on in there? both out of your minds? It was his idea. You know, like uh, Betty Davis said, aging is not for sissies. It's, uh, you know, the, um, the body, uh, as it uh, kind of like uh, falls apart a little bit, it's hard to adapt to. Um, uh, but, uh, I mean, that's what's so great about, about uh, Lake and Gerontophilia. He, he actually, the, for Gerontophiles, the older the body is, the more wrinkled, the more decrepit, the more it turns him on sexually. So it gives hope to us. Cristabella. He survived and came back, but it's a shame that the other boys didn't make it. You remember it? Ah. Brother's not coming back. They've all forgotten seeing you're gone, but I know you're not gone. I know you're still alive. Today's movies and festival TV are the French love triangle Grand Central, directed by Rebecca Sotowski, and the thriller of Good Report, a fascinating thriller about a teacher who gets obsessed with one of his pupils. Stay tuned while we show you some film clips and I speak to the directors. My scriptwriter Gail Massé came to me with a novel that was set uh, in, among the nuclear workers in France. When we started thinking about those guys and their heroism and the danger and the radioactivity and their inconsequence and their hero heroism that I said, they're very heroical. And uh, we're just thinking that it was typically the lexical of love. 
And so we decided to juxtapose uh, and make a dialogue and make an echo between the love story, very na banal and naive and very familiar a love story, which is like a love triangle, in this uh, atmosphere and in this industry and in this world. And then it worked as a, it worked as a subject. And, and how do you experience, I mean, in France, being a young female director? I think we're very privileged in France in this field. I mean, uh, privileged to make films first, uh, to make first, second, fears, uh, second features, and uh, art films. So when I travel, I just, I cannot not notice how privileged we are. But it's something we have to struggle for because it's always threatened by a lot of things. So, but I feel that as a as a filmmaker, I feel comfortable in France. Then as a female director, I feel that I'm not the only one. <laughs> There's a lot of female directors in France uh, that are my age and even uh, older women. I mean, like uh, the, the 40 years old the director, 50, 60. We, have, we always had in France a lot of female directors. So I must, I must say that it's a good place as well for, for female directors to work. Why do I think people are so fascinated with murderers and serial killers? Going into the story and why I would want to tackle material like that, it's because people like that are soft, so far removed from my own kind of understanding of what life is about that I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by how someone gets to that point. What could happen in your life? What could happen that would be so wrong in your life that you would choose to prey on others? I was totally surprised that even with the restraint that I showed, um, the film so bothered them that they would actually go out and ban it. Which, the other eerie thing for me, I, I could feel the ghost of Nobokov because um, a lot of the film is, is basically an homage to the book Lolita. And he faced that in 1955, you know, uh, to the point that he was bad. The thing with um, Itango is... Um, he leads with strength. And he leads with passion. I always say that black and white is the color scheme of the celluloid gods, you know? I think uh, it's timeless, um, but for two reasons on my side. Believe it or not, I'm actually squeamish, and I didn't want to see the blood. My film has a little bit of blood, and I didn't really want to see it in its, in its full goriness. And uh, the second thing is a bit narcissistic on my end. I was hoping that one day the film would be some kind of uh, cult classic. And I just thought black and white is a, is a good color scheme to preserve it in, you know? Well, that was all for this episode of Festival TV, but do join us next time where we will be attending the world premiere of the film Broken Hill Blues, the first film to be made by the Stockholm Film Festival Feature Film Award. And I will sit down with the director, Sofia Norlin, to talk about the process of making her first feature film. Until then, bye-bye.